Right guys, how's it going? Over the past few days, the tech world has been ablaze with talk of AMD's new upcoming CPU architecture and core known as Zen. Zen is AMD's follow-up to their bulldozer core and is a totally new high-performance core design with a new high-bandwidth, low-latency cache system, simultaneous multi-threading or SMT for high throughput and is of course built upon Global Foundry's 14 nanometer FinFET process. We'll talk about all these things in turn. There is a bunch of slides and demos to get through, so let's start at the beginning. Right, so let's take a look at what AMD is hoping to achieve with their new Zen Micro architecture. From the start, the aim was 40% more instructions per clock. And here we can see that this is compared to their current excavator core. Excavator is, of course, still based on their bulldozer core from 2011. Bulldozer had many flaws, but the weak IPC was probably one of the worst. And is the main reason why Bulldozer has such poor single threaded performance. Another design target for Zen was to have a one core fits all architecture. And here we can see that Zen will scale all the way down to the low power market where AMD's current Jaguar core resides. Jaguar is the core that is in the games consoles and all the way to the right hand side which is the higher performance market. All the while maintaining 40% plus higher IPC. So basically this one Zen core will replace everything in AMD's CPU lineup. Now on this slide we can see Bulldozer all the way at the left hand side and each iteration which improved on Bulldozer's rather poor performance, all the while reducing energy consumption at the same time. From the start, it was a very inefficient, slow CPU with very high power consumption. And when you create a new architecture, you're basically stuck with it for four or five years while the new one gets developed. So while AMD couldn't make massive wholesale changes to the core itself, they were able to double down on the power consumption. And with the excavator, they had brought power down to acceptable levels while constantly increasing IPC. What started off as a terrible CPU is now passable, but Zen needed to be something a lot better. And we can see here that Zen's plus 40% work per cycle at the same energy as Excavator has led to a very large efficiency gain, which is effectively a massive increase in instructions per clock without using any more power. Right, now hold on to your hats because it's about to get a little bit rough. It's difficult to talk about CPU architectures without having a look at the actual architecture itself. In simple terms, CPUs do three things. They fetch instructions from memory, they decode those instructions, and then they are executed. Any programmers amongst you will know what an instruction is, but it can be something as simple as multiply five times four, or move the contents of this variable to this memory address, things like that. These instructions are broken down into micro ops, which are queued before being sent to the execution resources, which on this diagram would be your integer and your floating point. One of the biggest changes in the Zen core is the inclusion of the operation cache or the micro op cache. This is something that they never had in Bulldozer and Intel has had since Sandy Bridge, I believe. Whenever you see a cache, just think memory. This is effectively memory on the CPU itself. Very small amounts which store instructions or micro ops that the CPU has been using most often. The reason for this is simple. It's much faster and much more efficient to save these instructions close to the CPU core rather than in system memory or RAM. And AMD has been talking a lot about these respective new caches in Zen. As far as the other non-cache related stuff goes, AMD are talking about enhanced branch prediction, which helps to select the next instructions. Again, if you're a programmer, you will know that branches are conditional statements where the program can jump to different areas of memory based on a decision. Branch prediction simply does what it sounds like. The CPU predicts where it thinks the next branch is heading and more often than not gets it right. As far as the execution resources go, everything is just a huge improvement on Bulldozer, whether that's the scheduling or the execution itself. In the case of Zen, the integer and floating point execution resources are separated, unlike with Bulldozer, which shared the floating point between two integer cores. But really, this is all about increasing IPC, and AMD is claiming dramatic gains in single-threaded performance. Right, now taking a look at Zen's cache hierarchy. Again, hold on to your hats, as this is pretty technical. 
but it all starts in the core with a 64k instruction cache and a 32k data cache. So this is different from anything we've seen yet, as normally these caches would be the same size. AMD claims that instructions are held more often than data, in around a 2 to 1 ratio, and that is why the instruction cache is twice the size. 4-way and 8-way is all about associativity, with a higher number generally being the better, but generally speaking a drop off after 4-way, but that's a little bit more technical than I want to get into here. So that's your L1 and each core also has access to 512k of level 2. We can see here that this is a shared instruction and data cache with 8-way associativity. Outside of the core is the 8 meg of L3. Again, instruction and data, which is 16-way associative. This L3 is known as a victim cache and is basically filled with instructions that are kicked out of the L2 when data in the L2 is replaced. AMD is claiming a high bandwidth, low latency cache, which is everything Bulldozer wasn't, with a claim of up to five times the cache bandwidth to a single core. Moving on to what AMD calls a CPU complex, here we can see a four-core CPU with the cores on each side and the levels of cache progressively moving towards the center. So a CPU complex is four cores connected to the L3 cache. The CPU that we've heard about so far, Summit Ridge, is an eight core CPU. So basically two of these CPU complexes on the same chip. And finally, we have another thing completely new to AMD, which is simultaneous multi-threading. Now you probably know that Intel has had SMT, or hyper-threading, for many years. Now I talk a lot more about graphics cards than I do CPUs, but hyper-threading is pretty similar to asynchronous compute, where high-performance cores have gaps, or bubbles, in utilization. Whether it's an inefficiency someplace, or perhaps instructions or data was not found in cache, multi-threading really helps to close those gaps by basically allowing two threads per core, and can be very useful in certain types of workload. Looking at the SMT overview, we can see that all structures are fully available in one thread mode. That is, when running in one thread, that one thread has access to everything. But while running in SMT mode, most of the resources are shared. But this is really all about throughput, when the CPU is performing very heavy lifting work, a demonstration of which you are about to see. On the audience's right is an Intel Broadwell E Core i7-6900K CPU. On the left is that Summit Ridge 8-core, uh, 16-thread part running at 3 gigahertz. We have set both at 3 gigahertz so that we can have a clock-to-clock, core-to-core, thread-to-thread comparison in Blender. You see that the Zen CPU uh, just edged out that Broadwell E processor in that demo. And that demo was pretty much why Zen was being talked about so much over this past week. It's probably worth having a look at one or two facts about this before we continue. First of all, the Core i7-6900K is of course one of Intel's newest high-end desktop processors, launched in Q2 this year, selling for over $1,000. And as you saw, 8 cores with 16 threads, exactly the same as Zen. It does however have a base frequency of 3.2 GHz, not 3 like we saw in the demo, and a maximum turbo of 3.7, also a TDP of 140 watts. So in the demo it was of course underclocked to 3 GHz. There are one or two reasons for why AMD would underclock this 6900K. One of the main reasons could be that, from what we know of the engineering samples, of which this Zen CPU was one, from what we've seen so far, the maximum base clock is 2.8 GHz, with a boost of 3.2 GHz. Now obviously when you're trying to compare IPC, you do need to get the same clock speed. So here we're having AMD saying that in Blender, or at least in that render using Blender, Zen has higher IPC than Broadwell E which is something that I personally wasn't expecting to see. Also interesting, over at Hardware France, according to AMD, it also consumed a little less power than the 6900K. Over at Hardware Canucks, we can see that Blender is actually pretty favourable for Intel. The fastest FX CPU, the 9590, is even slower than a non-hyper-threaded i5-6500. So in this benchmark, Zen would be second, behind the 10-core 20-thread 6950X. Blender really has been a very good benchmark for Intel, and the software which they recommend as a benchmark. So there's no need to think that this is friendly to AMD here. 
Blender is, however, known to scale very well with hyper-threading or SMT. So what we're probably seeing here is Zen's prowess when it comes to multi-threading. It was just a very slight victory and there's no guarantee that it would beat the 6900K in every render, but it's clearly going to be very good at that type of workload and points to a very strong floating point unit, which once again is a massive increase over what we have with Bulldozer. So far so good. What could possibly go wrong? Well, there is still the issue of final clock speeds. 2.8 GHz base, 3.2 GHz turbo. Intel isn't about to down clock their CPUs in order to give AMD a chance here and those clock speeds are just not quite good enough. That said, we are talking about AMD beating Intel here which is something that nobody even considered a few months ago. The issue here is of course the FinFET process. Even though the marketing materials say it is 14 nanometers, it's not a true 14 nanometer process. Neither is Intel's in actual fact, but Intel's process is smaller, is a more advanced advanced process, which in fact makes the performance of Zen even more surprising. But Intel does have an advantage there, and it is possible that Global Foundry's 14 nanometer FinFET process simply won't be capable of reaching 3.7 gigahertz or higher. And when I watched through this video of AMD's Zen event last week, some of the language they were using struck a chord. And we are back. The key message, we are absolutely hitting our performance targets. They know they've got something really good and they keep on saying that they are back. But there's also been a theme of things will only get better. This is only the beginning and the best is yet to come. Which sort of tells me that, yep, they've got the architecture, but they probably don't quite have the process yet, but they expect this to come to them over the next year or so. There is a history of this. Global Foundries generally starts off very slow. And then over the years, the process really picks up. And in the past, this has resulted in higher clock speeds for AMD CPUs over a year or two. So that's something we can expect to see here once again. Wrapping this one up though, I would say that it all looks promising. We've got the benchmark, we've got the body language. The markets like what they see, the stock price has risen once again. For me, Zen looks like it could be a winner in servers and later on in laptops, both of which are areas where highest clock speeds are less of a requirement. Will the upcoming Zen CPU be capable of beating, say, an i7-6700K core for core in, say, for example, a typical gaming load or in single thread? About that, I'm not so sure. Is this process capable of hitting 4 gigahertz? And we already know that Skylake has better IPC than Broadwell. So AMD isn't ahead in IPC. Even though they showed that demo, they are still behind in IPC, at least compared to Skylake. But the gap is tiny. The important thing is they have the architecture. The process will come to them over time. And I do actually believe that the best is yet to come. Perhaps the best thing about Zen is that the entry level quad cores with hyper threading should become very cheap indeed and hopefully this will spell the end of dual cores like the Pentiums and even the i3s which are simply dual cores with hyper threading. Even if Zen can't match Skylake core for core, Zen quad cores will surely put paid to that market and that is something that will benefit everyone apart from Intel. So there's not long to go now and the first Zen CPUs will probably be seen at the Consumer Electronics Show in January next year. I for one simply cannot wait. I'll catch you later guys.